everyone! So today we're starting a brand new episode, even though we have not finished the previous one completely, but this is construction life. So in this episode we're building the walls for the second story, like that one. It's going to be pretty cool and we need to get to work because winter is coming, so let's get into it! So we're going at lightning speed, as you might have seen, the Kaufman crew have been here. And, um, but let's take a quick break so that we can show some of the details that have been taking place. The second story is significantly more complex than the first or what we have built so far when it comes to walls. Yeah, these are double height walls, but the only difference is they're 12 foot walls versus 9 foot walls. So, uh, First off, let's begin here. We're finally making it to the roof. What you see right here is the... Uh, ring board for the flat roof that we'll have right here. Uh, this is an eight foot distance, so we have a slope of a quarter inch per foot. And uh, so that, that's why this ring board is uh, two inches higher from the top plate. I don't know if you can see it, it's probably a little bit far away. So now um, let's take a quick jump and I'll show you this wall. Cool, so here we are. Uh, this wall is actually uh, a bit more interesting because as you can see probably down here, it is sitting on a beam. So it is kind of like floating in the air. Basically, the vision of the architect was as you come up the landing of the stairs, you will have this nice uh, eight foot window. We'll do a nice little tour of the house with the interior design and all that stuff a little bit later, once we have it more built. So let's, uh, let me show you some more stuff. Cool, so this is the very first world we built and it's probably one of the most important in, in, the, in the sense that uh, it'll allow us to keep moving forward and uh, the reason for that is it, it is allowing us to call the uh, steel contractor, finish his work, uh, take care of the rich beam. The rich beam is going to be basically all steel. We have, a, I think, three, three steel uh, columns or beams going through and uh, one of them is going to be going in that hole and that's the reason for that hole over there. Uh, it's going to be coming out, coming down there somewhere and it's going to be sitting there. Uh, we're going to be cutting a small LVL column for the steel to sit there. We'll just cut it when the steel contractor is here. Cool, another cool thing I wanted to show you, and you might have seen it in the main, ho main house walls, is this connector. It basically replaces uh, jacks or trimmers. It allows for a very nice uh, thinner column, if you will, that way you don't end up with these massive stacks of uh, lumber. Um, so yeah, and uh, hopefully you disregard our uh, awfully cut uh, sheeting right now. We're going to be fixing that with a router uh, hopefully soon, um, hopefully today even. And finally, I just wanted to show you one other cool detail on this uh, wall. Um, if you see up here, we have the top plates, but the header is coming in and it's cutting into the top plates. And that is by design, it's been written in the documents from the engineer from the beginning. Uh, his requirement was to basically put a metal strap 
holding them in place once it was cut. And we actually do have it, it's on the other side, but I'm thinking they're so cheap, we might as well put another one on this side as well. So yeah, that said, um, a little bit more excitement on the walls over here. We still have uh, to build another kind of like floating wall, kind of like the one for the um, by the stairs. So uh, let's just keep building. This rake wall behind me has been such a tremendous pain, even though it now look, looks nice and uh, pretty. So what we ended up doing is initially we uh, assembled it underground, we lifted partially, and then we didn't put the top plates and all that kind of stuff. And then once we lifted it, we realized it was um, not right. So I actually ended up staying till like 6, 7 p.m. Uh, trying to fix it with a chainsaw, jig, uh, saw, saw, circular saw. I got so frustrated that fortunately I went home. The next morning I said, you know what, screw it. Let's cut everything that's not done right and uh, let's reassemble it. And so we decided to reassemble it and then start working on the little closet that we have behind him, behind me. And then fortunately for us, a few days later, Terrell came over uh, from the Kaufman guys and uh, he took care of it and it looks amazing now. So long story short, the lesson is probably uh, to use chalk lines on the ground to properly do the complete layout of the wall, assemble it on the ground and make sure it's perfectly right and then lift it up. Um, hey, but that's what life is all about, making mistakes and learning. So I'm here in the ADU because we need to do a repair before we fully finish assembling the walls up above. Otherwise, it's going to be a tremendous pain to make this repair uh, afterwards. Um, but as you can see, we're like fully sheathed. It's all dark. I'm making use of the winter lights we, we, we used uh, during December. Uh, but let's get to it, I guess. Um, we had the engineer come over like 50% of the framing and overall he liked everything, except he did not like this little detail, I suppose. You see these double LVLs, they were meant to be sitting right above these uh, king studs of, the, um, of this window. So what that meant is he made us basically break the uh, blocking that we had and we cut a slit on the rim board at the front so that we could slide in this uh, LVL that you can see right here that we have already installed. Uh, once installed, it is now sitting above the trimmer slash uh, header and uh, that was uh, his solution to the problem. You can see we have also installed the hurricane ties. So with that out of the way, we are now able to build the, the wall above and then uh, not cause us any future problems.
Check this out, the steel contractor came over and he installed all of the remaining steel. So we are done with steel uh, once and for all. So this is tremendous news because we can now finish all of the remaining walls that we have pending and basically be done with this episode and get to the roof as soon as possible because I don't know if you can tell right there, that mountain just got snowed and the uh, winter's coming. So let's get to it. Before we go, I want to show you actually a couple things. Uh, what you see up here, this is uh, one of the attics and we actually have the house broken into two sections. Uh, what we call the main house and what we call the uh, tiny house. And the reason for that is because of the bridge of the Seine area. That makes it very difficult to run electricity and plumbing from one side to the other. So what I showed you just right now is the attic for the main house and that attic is going to contain uh, ERVs, HRVs, radon fans, electricity that's going to be uh, exclusive to the main house. And then over here behind me we have the uh, attic for what we call the tiny house. Uh, let me show you real quick. And then this attic is going to have independent uh, electricity, independent ERVs, HRVs, radon. And this makes our life way easier for when it comes to electrical and plumbing. So just wanted to show you that real quick. Let's finish up this episode right here, even though we are still missing a few items, such as this uh, baby rake wall behind us, some blocking here and there. Uh, but mainly because this has been a very lengthy episode, we waited for steel. Even though we've had the Kaufman guys helping us, there's a lot of walls, a lot of complexity, all this kind of stuff. So, And uh, I actually also wanted to give you a quick tour of the interior design, but I think we'll have plenty of, of opportunities to show you how it's going to look up here in the future because as soon as we put this roof on we're moving on to the interiors and uh, you'll get to see all of that stuff so that's it uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>